Hey, what's the word? Hey, yo, were you gonna fish the nukes today? <laughs> oh, you wanna join in now? <laughs> Bye. Y'all, welcome back to the channel today. We're going heavy duty and we're breaking up the new baits. Where have we got the brand new nuke punches? Check those things out. It's similar to a bandito bug, but if I give you all that full 360, you'll notice it's just a little bit fatter, reinforced for getting into some of the thickest cover flipping reeds. You're gonna be punching through pads, punching through thick grass mats with this guy right here, and hopefully we can showcase a little bit of that today. We've got a few more packages over here in the corner. We have got Okeechobee Crawl, we've got Black and Blue Flake, we got Watermelon Red Flake, we got Green Pumpkin, and we got a little bit of a sore throat. My allergies are kicking in. You probably can tell I've lost my voice a little bit. That's okay, we're trying to put this thing together for you in the 90 degree Texas heat. Let me show you guys the rigs we're using real quick. We're going straight braid on them today 50 pound on both muscle rod setups just a fast gear ratio reel and then also you're going to want to start things off with some weight pegs we've got some carl's weight pegs right here we like to use two when we're going like half ounce weights to you know one ounce weights when you're really going to be potentially punching through some thick stuff but as well as just your overall flipping we've got two weight pegs on our setups today and then we're going with the weights this right here is a big heavy mustad I purchased for punching through some of the thickest stuff that I will rarely use, but it is an example of a heavier weight. Today, I've got a one ounce weight on my setup right here. And on Devin's set, oh, it's over here. And on, and on Devin's setup, she's gonna be flipping with a half ounce weight. Just because I don't think we're gonna be doing too much to where that one ounce is gonna be necessary today. Again, showcasing the bait, showing a couple different ways to fish it. So a half ounce and a one ounce is what we're throwing. And then you're gonna to toss on a flipping hook. This is a four out flipping hook, which is a perfect size for the bait. You're gonna to wanna to tie a snell knot with that. And I don't think I have a video on the snell knot. I'll try and link the one that I watched to uh, learn how to tie it down in the description. Uh, it is critical that you do tie a snell knot when it comes to these flipping hooks and heavy punching techniques. And you'll notice when you set that hook, that weight presses up against it, and that hook is gonna help get penetrated through the lip. So it's critical when you tie your snell knots, you do it a certain way. You wanna start the knot leading the line through the front of the eyelet. Otherwise, you're gonna get a reverse snell knot, and what's gonna happen is when that weight hits the hook, it's gonna push it backwards. So make sure you guys get that right when you're tying your snell knots. So it's a little bit different than the Texas rig. You're gonna start it off the same way. You're gonna make it flip a little bit of a 180 here, and then there's a shelf that you're gonna to wanna to push that plastic up and above, and it's gonna sit on that shelf, boom, just like that. And then instead of pushing that hook all the way through like we do on a Texas rig, like that right there, we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line that plastic up and we want it to be pushing through the plastic but not all the way. That way we can really get through some thick cover. So what I mean is I'm gonna, I'm gonna see where that bait's gonna line up to where I don't scrunch it and then I'm gonna come down here to where I need to push that hook through the bait and now it is inside the bait but there is no way that I'm gonna be getting caught on any cover. And yet when you set that hook, it's gonna pop it up and you're gonna catch those fish you guys so that is the rig let's go ahead and hit the water so we just made it the first spot and I want to tell you guys a little bit about this rig itself why you might use a heavier weight than normal double stack those weight pegs and uh, break out the punching setup as well as just flipping which is gonna be a lot of what we're doing today but we did find an area at the first pond where we knew we could showcase this technique thick grass mats right here in the back corner of this pond and so what does that mean well, oftentimes when you're breaking out something like this you're punching through thick cover and like the heat of the day sun's beating down and those fish are either out deep or maybe they're hiding under cover tucked in the shade and they are also looking for something like this guy right here to drop right in front of their face and have a big meal so with that being said let's say you see this grass and you assume those fish are under there and you cast out your usual quarter ounce three eighth ounce Texas rig right on top of this grass and it just sits on top of the surface because it's not heavy enough to actually punch through and get down to where those bass are at now with this guy right here this is a one ounce weight it's also a tungsten weight so it's a little bit more dense and compact compared to like those lead weights or whatever else you might be throwing out there that chip up real easy so we love the tungsten if you have an opportunity to grab some of that do it and when you go heavy you're gonna need double weight pegs otherwise that weight can shift and so you want to double that thing down so that your weight stays close to the bait and you're able to work it through this thick stuff so I want to see if I can demonstrate a cast for y'all real fast so what we're gonna do is punch through this grass and see if there's a bass underneath here and get a little catch if not we're gonna be just kind of working these around the city flipping and hitting some cool spots and hopefully catching some big bass for you all right, y'all, after that first cast, I'm already liking this because sometimes you get through something like this and then the end of a pond, it's just a couple inches under that grass. I can tell there's a couple feet here, so that depth has really got me wanting to make a few more casts in here. Let's see if we can get a fish as we walk it down a little bit. 
One more added benefit of those flipping hooks is the fact that there's nothing that's going to get caught as it's falling through the cover. So usually when you have those Texas rig hooks, your typical worm hooks, EWGs, it's got that little shelf. That way your plastic doesn't fall down. Well, that piece sticks out and when you're working through the cover, sometimes it gets caught on the way down and you don't want that. So this is much more streamlined and fluid when it's going through that cover. So let's keep on making some casts. I just left them in the truck, these baits. Got them. Yep. There we go. All right, first one. A uh, bass, this one. Yeah. Uh huh, that is true. It <laughs> really. Yeah, we have fun with it. We <laughs> we just do it for fun. We catch and release them. So yeah, I'm just gonna let them go. Yep. <laughs> you said I was gonna say make good dinner, right? <laughs> yeah. Have a good night. Thank you. <laughs> there we go, y'all. Solid chunker. I think that's probably two pounds or so. So as you'll notice, both of those pegs to move up the line, right? So that's why you want to use two because it will push around that weight for sure when you're setting the hook or you're getting bites on this thing. I just push that bait right on back up. I can see the hook is penetrating, so I don't want that because I'm gonna be hitting the cover again. So I just pulled it back down a little bit. Now I'm completely weedless. I like all these ridges too. As it's falling, what's happening is those ridges are creating more and more vibration. Instead of just being a flat edge surface where it's not gonna cause as much vibration in the water, which those fish key in on. That bass could have been over there when it dropped, but as those vibrations kind of trickle out, they come in and see what that was, and boom, we got our first bite of the day on this sucker. As soon as we made a switch, by the way, we, we made a little bit of a move. I wanted to showcase the technique at that first spot, but now we're able to get through some of this stuff here or cast out into the open, hit the along the wall. You pretty versatile with the bait like this. You're not always running around with a heavy weight, but this spot's actually pretty deep. So a nice heavy weight to get to the bottom where they seem to be feeding is actually not a bad idea. Oh yeah, birthday bass. First one on my birthday. I forgot about that. <laughs> Hit the corner where that runner's at though. Like a one ounce tungsten weight with a little flipping hook. Yeah, then the weight's not going around. And so you can work through the stuff a little bit better and it stays close to the bait. And so that's that. Yeah. Hey, it's nice meeting you too. Oh, oh, that's good. Good one. Oh, just kidding. Well, that's how you get through the grass right there. One ounce weight. Ah, green pumpkin purple. Got one. <laughs> yeah, bass, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. You got large and small in here? I think just the large mouth in this one right here. Yeah, some big catfish. Big catfish, I'll tell you that. Yeah, we saw somebody catch one the uh, other day. Wow. Yeah, th yeah, there's some giants in here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm from Seattle, so I only... Uh... You got big old sturgeon up there, I think, or maybe not. Maybe in... Yeah. yeah. That's nuts. I haven't caught one, but I've seen them and it's, whew. Y'all <laughs> have a good one. All right, y'all, there we go. Another one on the nuke punch, heck yeah. Second one. We're coming up on some more of the good stuff. This is the thick grass that this weight just got through to allow us to get that catch. It was a little bit deeper too. So a lot of times I'll kind of flip it and I'll leave the spool open and let it fall straight down and get through those stems that the quarter ounce weight might not normally get to the bottom with. And once I'm sure I'm at the bottom, not like what you might call a false bottom sometimes when you're kind of punching through some stuff like this. And really it's not very thick, but just the whole point of getting this heavy weight down to the bottom and how it works in your favor is you're just gonna leave that spool open let it fall and as soon as you feel like you're at the bottom you just leave it there for a second give it a few pops and hope for that bite and that's exactly what happened on the last catch let's see if we can find some more in the grass as we walk it down I hope y'all are catching the ones that are about the size of a human <laughs> jump and i'm like i don't even want to know There's what that was big stuff in here <laughs> they might pull you in. i know nice her first one on the nuke punch wow how sick is that green pumpkin purple Ooh. Oh, watch that hook oh my gosh look at that little butterball that little fish my first fish of the night on the nuke three fish on it the first time going out in the city we'll take it the nuke needs some reassembly at the power plant so <laughs> we're gonna let her release them and we'll get some more for you bye bud <laughs> <laughs> back flip could be a handful right here with how the wind's kind of coming in this way and there's like a lot more grass Got him. 
There we go. Y'all can't see it now because it's kind of getting dark. The sun's not beating down, but there's a thick grass patch right here, right where homie was hanging out. Ooh, if I didn't keep that line tight, he would have came right off too. Oh my gosh. Decent hook set. For, wow, they're all doing flips out here. That was crazy. That's two for two on backflips. Anyways, that was a decent hook set for that little guy. You never know what you're working with. And so you always, especially with these thicker gauge hooks, whenever you're flipping, you really want to set it with authority. Otherwise, you might miss that fish. Because again, it's buried so deep into that plastic, which is which is part of the point in this technique, that you've really got to make sure you drive it home. Otherwise, you're just simply not going to catch any fish. So you really got to hammer time it. Y'all, I couldn't even turn off the camera and Devin gets another one. That's five fish now. You're awarded with the smallest fish of the evening award. <laughs> oh, well, he's just flopping away. Anyways, Devin gets the smallest fish of the day award. Finally, it's not me. She's been catching all the big fish lately. If y'all didn't see her catch her new PBs. Moving on, that's five fish on the new punch. The thing's starting to kick butt at sunset. These fish are coming up shallow into the grass, and I think we might be onto something here. All right, y'all, that is gonna do it for all the new punch footage for the first time out with it on the channel, at least. We fished with it a handful of times, caught more fish. I just haven't put full videos together, but uh, we were able to catch a few punching right get that one ounce weight into some grass that the quarter ounce weights that are typical with a lot of our texas rigs wouldn't normally be able to get through and that's what you want those fish are hanging out under there especially during the summertime when the sun is high and so we were able to showcase a couple catches like that i'm sure we're still going to have a handful of very hot days but it's going to be a flipping bait for us the majority of the time probably on a half ounce weight with a flipping hook and we're just going to be roaming around the lake on the bass boat flipping at all the reeds and expect some big catches from this bait coming up very soon to close things out last Lastly, some folks might want to know where to throw this compared to the creature bait, the bandito bug, or maybe you have another creature bait you use and you're wondering when the flipping bait is necessary. This is more of a reaction strike in that thicker cover, so you don't need all those appendages. You just want to get down there. That shape pairs up perfectly with your bullet weights, and it's going to get you flipping into the reeds, punching through the thick grass mats, things of that nature. That's exactly when you would choose this bait. It goes right down in front of them. It does have the two pinchers. They're going to smack it. but. If you're in some more clearer water and you're just working through some timber and you're just kind of dragging bottom, you're going to want maybe something like that creature bait, the crawfish. Just a little extra flutter, a couple extra appendages. They have time to come in, take a look at it. They say, I want to eat this. And that's where the bandito bug, the crack and craw are going to still shine versus this flipping bait where it is, of course, just designed for heavy cover, getting in there and ripping the fish out. So thank you all for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Got a lot more fly content. We're loving it come in your direction very soon along with more casting stuff let us know what you want to see and we hope to catch you then peace